Yeah, it's your boy Chili here. Time for your monthly update on the the status of Planet Chili. I'm alive. I'm doing good. You know, I got um, I got dysentery. It wasn't dysentery, but it was something. It was like norovirus. Something it hit the whole family. We were blowing. We were all blowing chunks out of both ends. Fever. It was it was a little bit of a nightmare scenario, but we're we're through it. And I'm through the the worst of my work crunch at the year end that I had. So I'm hoping maybe to get back to some to some content at some point. We got some good things on the horizon. Um, finally gonna make good on my threat to Red Skittle Fox. Try to try to get his input on the chill. So we want to move chill forward. And uh, on that topic, by the way, uh, I just recorded a video. That's a big kind of like an inside baseball on the current state of chill and just like how it's architected. I've been giving you little sneak peeks about, you know, my, my little experiments and tests in rendering and chill in these update videos. And I'll do another one in this video as well. But that one is gonna be a more full-blown, just kind of like walkthrough of the, the whole system as it stands, which is still very much up in air and tentative. But for what it's worth, it'll be a bit of a debriefing on, you know, what's on my mind, about the uh, the current design and how to move forward in the future and just how it all works. Uh, and I forgot to say this so in that video, but I will also pu I'll push to a separate branch the current experimental stuff if you guys want to look at the code itself and run it. So it'll be up there on a, some branch, you'll have to look for it. I'll probably put it in the description of that video, but anyways. Anyway, so that's a video you can... I'll put it in the chill playlist and it might it's not really part of the chill thing where you're building the whole system. It's more of just experimentation. So it might be removed from that playlist at some point. But since nothing else is going in that playlist, might as well put this in there. Um, so yeah, look out for that one. But uh, just wanted to again say for all your Patreon boys out there, thank you very much as always. And you will not be getting charged. I will. I'm putting one one video out this month, but you will not be getting charged for that. I will turn that off right after I turn this OBS off. Stop recording. Uh, so no, don't expect charges there. Uh, and thank you as always for your support. And now, let me just uh, show you a little bit of experiments that I've been doing. Uh, I talked about them probably in the previous um, update video, but I wanted to experiment with virtualization, try to figure out what the costs are and uh, how much I can do. And the answer is, I think I can do a lot. I think I can virtualize the hell out of this mother trucker and it's not gonna, it's not gonna hurt us. But uh, the details are a little interesting. They're quite interesting. So let me show you my experiment. I created this uh, header file with a bunch of macro definitions. Uh, v something, V virtual, V override. These are all keywords associated with, you know, virtual functions, dynamic dispatch and inheritance. And depending on if I define this or not, classes become virtual or not virtual. And in that way, I can test the impact of the virtual dispatch itself and how it affects performance. So for example, in, uh, for example, in Sprite Batcher, I define this, uh, well, I split, it, I split these files up, so it's a little messy right now, but it looks a lot nicer in my current head. Anyways, uh, I Sprite Batcher is the, the, uh, the pure virtual interface here. And then Sprite Batcher, if I can find it here, inherits from I Sprite Batcher, but only if um, I define virtual active. Otherwise, it's no, it has no inheritance. And likewise, when I create a Sprite Batcher, which I believe I do in main. So yeah, when I'm creating it, I create the concrete one. But when I create the container for it, I used V interface. So if virtual is active, this will actually be a container of unique pointer to I sprite batcher, and it will have to use the dynamic dispatch. Um, but if virtual is inactive, there is no inheritance relationship, so I have to use just the base sprite batcher. So I did a little bit of uh, macro shenanigans, which allowed me to switch 
quickly between these two different code bases, really. One that is using virtual dispatch for everything and one that is using it for nothing. Uh, and I created extra layers on top of the graphics rendering for sprite animations, for animated sprite. And it's all virtual in here too, if I want it to be. And I wanted to test the difference between them. And I split up the, the measurements as I was testing. I, I learned that it makes sense to split it up into two areas. There's two places where every sprite instance is being transformed. One area, let me just see if I can find it here, is when we are just, uh, it's not here, that's here. That's when we are updating all of the sprites. So I'm actually dividing the sprites up. We got 250,000 of them and I'm dividing them up into four batches and they're going to be uh, processed in parallel on four separate threads, so concurrently. And the two stages are we update them all, which is purely CPU operation, and then we draw them all. And this also is sort of purely CPU. It's only CPU code that's being executed when we're calling these draws. We're just submitting them, putting them in the batch, uh, so filling information in memory. But there's a little bit of a caveat. This one is it's all CPU, but there's a, there's a trick. So anyways, I measure how much time it takes to update all the sprites, and then I measure how much time it takes to draw all the sprites. So if we look, and this is the numbers I'm going to get are going to be different than what I measure normally because I'm running OBS to record this crap. But just to give you an idea, with virtual active when I run this, so here's what it looks like. Um, yeah, this is a lot slower than when I'm not running OBS, but bear with me now. This is what the sprite update is looking like. So the update is taking, in this case, about 1.5 milliseconds. It's, it's fluctuating. You know, it goes up to like 2 point something, so some of them are taking a lot longer than others. But in general, yeah, like, like around 1 point some milliseconds. And then the draw takes like between, you know, 3 and 5 milliseconds to do. So on average, like four, on average here, maybe like, you know, 1.6 or something. I don't know. And here we're running four batches. So we're running this on four separate cores. Now, if we disable the virtualization, it's going to run faster. Or at least that's the idea, but it's hard to tell. It is running a little faster. We can see in the update, some of them go down to zero point some milliseconds. Uh, so it's running a bit faster, but it's still generally in the one point something range here. And it's in like the the three point something four or five three four five range in here so you don't see much of a difference and a lot of that is you know due to OBS's interference here it's just it's not going to be good measurements when I'm recording on OBS at the same time I'm doing this stuff um, so I just have to tell you what the results are when I'm not recording on OBS and they are uh, essentially the sprite update is a decent amount faster when you turn virtualization off. It's like maybe uh, 0.5 milliseconds with virtualization on and maybe like 0.4 or 0.35 with virtualization off. So you're looking at like a 20, 30, sometimes even 40% increase in speed of the updates. Uh, with virtualization off because I, I I loaded this layer up with a lot of virtual functions that get called for every single sprite uh, and the actual calculations themselves are are not too heavyweight so it is a decent amount the, the overhead compared to the calculations there is a decent ratio there so you're getting yeah like 20 30 percent slower with the virtual calls enabled that's for that's for this one the update for the draw no change whatsoever. And the draw, it's not even that different between when I'm running OBS. It's like, well, it is actually. It's its generally about 2.2 milliseconds um, on average, 2.2 milliseconds, and this one is like 0 0.5. So the lion's share of the CPU work is being done in the draw, and that one doesn't change nothing no matter if you have virtualization on or off this one changes quite a bit but it's definitely the smaller so the overall change is very sm relatively small and because 
most of the most of the load is in the drawing and that is not affected by the virtualization. So why not? I have virtual calls in the draw path as well. But here's the thing, here's what I learned. Basically your overhead is all here. And I changed this code from what I had before, by the way. So this pointer here is a pointer that you get when you map your vertex buffer. And you're getting a pointer to some memory uh, that actually maps to the PCIe bus into the memory of your GPU. So writing to this memory is equivalent to transferring data over your PCIe bus. And that becomes your bottleneck. Um, and so whether you make your functions virtual or not, this is what is slowing you down. And all the other stuff just doesn't matter. It's a fart in the wind. And this is much bigger than the time you spend in your update. So the gains that you get in here are relatively minor compared to the big picture of your total CPU time. And so that is reason one why I'm not so worried about putting virtual functions, especially in the draw path, in the stuff like the sprite batch or draw in, in there. I am very happy to virtualize a lot of that and make it a lot more flexible. In this path, I am open to virtualizing parts of it um, if it gives me a, a decent advantage in my code. But I don't want to go hog wild and virtualize it because it does have some impact on the total. Uh, now you might say, well, actually, Chile, it's quite a big impact. If I get if I get 0 0.1 or 0 0.2 milliseconds difference, and my total time spent is maybe three milliseconds, that's almost 10%. That's not nothing, Chile. And I'm like, okay, yeah, that's not nothing. It's also not something huge, but here's the real kicker. I am not limited by my CPU in this scenario, not at all. My limit is on my GPU. So I could go twice as slow on the CPU and I would still get the exact same frame rate because my GPU at these high numbers of sprites, like 250 sprites and like half a million sprites, I can push half a million sprites and still get 60 frames per second, but the limiting factor is 100% the GPU. And my CPU is 60 frames per second is 16 milliseconds. And my CPU is usually at that point, like taking four milliseconds to do its work, um, four or five. So not even close. There's no benefit in me trying to penny pinch and, you know, clutch my pearls about, oh, I can't have too many virtual functions. It's going to ruin my performance. It's a joke. It is a joke in most of the cases. So my basic philosophy going forward, based on all this information, by the way, just one more thing before I talk about that. Uh, interesting thing. I was able to speed up this a lot. I noticed like if I throw four threads at this one, it gets like almost four times faster. Uh, but if I throw four threads at this one, it gets maybe two times faster, maybe not quite two times faster. And that's what led me to understand that my bottleneck was in transferring data over my bus. And when I re-examined my code, I realized I was not writing to that memory in perfect sequential order. And I might have even been reading from, and that's very bad because when you map into memory on the PCI bus, uh, that maps to something called uncacheable write combining memory. And it's very slow. And what the CPU does is it has an internal buffer and you fill that buffer and then it dumps that buffer to the, uh, to the bus. And if you start jumping around, that is going to mess with the way the buffer works. And if you try to read from the bus, then it's going to be very slow because it's not going to use the buffer. It's going to try to read across the PCIe bus and it's going to flush things. It's going to be nasty. It's going to be a very nasty time. So the way to get the best performance is to write all your bytes in perfect sequential order. And so the way I ensure that is I build up my vertex data on the CPU, basically in the CPU cache, um, doing all the operations. I don't have to worry about the order in which I'm writing the members or anything. I can do whatever the hell I want. And when it's all built up, then I mem copy to get a perfect byte by byte sequential writing. And that had, that gave me a big performance boost, like 50% or something like that. Um, whereas change the virtual functions didn't do anything. That was a fart in the wind, worse than a fart in the wind. So 
just an aside in the, in, the interesting world of uh, uncacheable right combining memory. But back to what I was talking about. What do all these results tell me about how I want to live my life moving forward? Well, looking at virtualization, you know, we can characterize it as to where those functions lie in the code. Are they in a cool path, like something that only happens once when you're constructing uh, an object? So maybe like once when you change a scene or infrequently as you stream in and out of regions in a scene. Um, that stuff, obviously, it's it's so infrequent that who the fuck cares about like a 0.01% overhead? Usually these functions are large to begin with, so the proportion of the virtual overhead is tiny, and then it's almost never being called. It would be insane to worry about virtualizing anything in the cool path. Just virtualize everything because it makes your life flexible. The frame path is something that's called, you know, once per frame or like a fixed amount of times per frame, k times per frame. And this stuff, you know, you might be thinking about it, but when I did my tests with 500,000 sprites where I was virtualizing every call for every sprite, and I found the, the difference to be, you know, not that big, that told me that it is insane to worry about virtualizing anything in the frame path. Because this stuff only called once or a few times per frame is so dumb to even try to think about not virtualizing this because you're afraid of a performance impact. The smoothest brain take possible. So that leaves us with the hot path. This is the n path, where it's big O of n, where n is your number of entities being drawn. This one, I think we still have to think about, but it's not a big a problem as I, I feared it might be, judging from this data, because first of all, we're GPU limited when we hit enormous amounts of uh, entities being drawn. Number two, we're dominated by the bandwidth limitations of the PCIe bus. And number three, the overall proportion of this is still small to begin with, like less than 10%. So I am going to, when I build the higher level constructs, like the, what I call, what I'm currently calling the sprite blueprint and the sprite instance and the animations and all that stuff, uh, I'm not going to worry that much about virtualizing things because that means that people can customize these built-in components nicely. But, you know, I won't virtualize something if I don't see any benefit to it. Like, I won't just virtualize on principle. If I don't really see a benefit to virtualizing a thing, I'll just leave it not virtual. Um, but anywhere where I could see a benefit, I'm going to do it. And, you know, we're not going to stop performance measuring. We'll still keep going. And if we notice, you know, something, a problem, we can always revisit and refactor. But for the time being, I'm leaning towards more virtualization. All, pretty much always in these ones and often in these ones, but not always. And that is, uh, that's where I'm at. Because I'm looking at it and I'm like, I can push half a million sprites, half a million good sized sprites. Like these aren't point sprites. These aren't bullets. These aren't particles. These are decently sized. I don't know if I shown, yeah, I, I did show this, right? You know what I mean? It's hard to see when you've got like a quarter million of them up here. Here we go. Like these are decent sized sprites. And this is a fully animated sprite. You know, I'm pushing 32 different sprite variations on here. And, you know, each with their, their frames of animation, all the good stuff going on here. And I can do that for half a million of them. When I'm not recording on OBS, I can do a half a million and still hit 60 frames per second. And that is way more than any game is going to need. Let me, let me tell you. Because, like, I mean, if you look at your typical 2D games, the ones that are popular, the ones that are good, you're looking at stuff like... Like Stardew Valley, like, like I don't know, like Factory or something like that. Like they're working with hundreds of frames on the screen, or hundreds of sprites on the screen simultaneously, not like half a million. Uh, and even you know your outliers, your bullet hells, and your mob games, like they're going in the thousands, maybe the ten thousands. They're never reaching the levels that we can hit here in sixty frames per second. So we're already more performance than you need. And this is with these big sprites. Like, if I were to turn these into 
point sprites into bullets into uh, particles we would hit even bigger numbers i would be able to optimize more we wouldn't need rotation per sprite and all that stuff so we're getting crazy performance there is no need for me to prematurely optimize this to gain like a 5% performance boost on the CPU when we're already limited on the GPU. It's stupid. It's, it would be so dumb. And, uh, but I'm glad I did the testing. You know, you don't just want to assume things. You want to you wanna look at the numbers, and the numbers were probably better than I expected. I was expecting maybe I'd have to, to penny pinch a little more, but I don't need to. And the beauty of it is, okay, imagine that, actually, uh, but my game needs a million sprites on the screen. And it's like, okay, I don't believe you, but let's, let's say it does. With the framework, you can actually replace, you know, the upper layers, the, the sprite implementation with your own implementation. You could use like an ECS or whatever you want to use and gain your benefits there. So if you need to, you can customize that stuff and it will all work. Um, you can build on top of the lower levels with whatever you want. And like I shown before, the lower levels, they don't get any benefit because they're, they're limited by the bandwidth to begin with. So that's where I'm at. A little bit of an update. Hope you enjoyed it. Again, keep on the lookout for a new video in the chill playlist that's going to go over all this stuff in here. Going to explain it all and explain you know, all the, the problems that I'm currently grappling with in the design of the final graphics system. But, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed. If you did, please click the like button. It helps a lot. And I will see you again with another update.